Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included here in the One Duplicant Challenge. In the previous episode we have started building a liquid storage solution and today we're gonna complement that with a cleaning, sorting and temperature regulating system. As a refresher, this area here is reserved for water, then we have some polluted water, some oil, petroleum right here and finally the supercoolant. These are gonna be the main liquids that I intend to store at a certain capacity. The upper portion right here is the input and the lower portion is the output. Right now of course at the moment everything is at the bottom but that is gonna change soon. My geysers are mostly at the, the top that are providing the water. And then of course a lot of it is gonna come from the teleporter from the second planetoid and the rest is gonna come from space. So the tendency of the input is gonna be on the top. Now I was thinking here we have plenty of time to actually check the liquids for germs and also regulate their temperatures. For instance we could get things started here with a steam turbine room. Let's actually see how many we can fit. Is it just gonna be the one? No, we could fit two. Hmm, I'm actually not so convinced anymore. Let's maybe put this at the bottom. So the steam room would be here at the bottom. Then a bunch of steam turbines. Actually, that doesn't really make sense. I would need to do it as of this point, so I have the space for my pipes here at the bottom. That means two steam turbines like this, and that would be my room. We might be utilizing two aqua tuners, one to get the water to temperature and the other one to get the oil to temperature. The other three liquids don't necessarily have to be tuned. I'm gonna start by adding a couple of reservoirs. Let's maybe do three or four. Uh, let's go with three, that gives us a little bit more space. And then we could add a second row, this would be for the brine and the salt water. Let's maybe see if we can arrange that. Water would be coming down here, that means we cut off all the other pipes and just add bridges like so. And that also means we don't yet have to travel over here. It would then be daisy chained from one reservoir to the other, just as a little buffer. Now the brine and the salt water are gonna be coming in from a different place. We can all mix them together here in these liquid reservoirs. We could then theoretically go ahead and check the liquid pipe thermo sensor here. And if it detects a specific temperature, we're gonna allow it into the storage. So we could add our liquid shut off like this and continue upwards back into the water line. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that right away. This can be removed and we're gonna need some more bridges to hop over that pipe. If the water comes out too hot at this point, we'll have to go into the aqua tuner room. Now there's probably one more thing we need to take care of. Let me remove this ladder. We need a security measurement so that when we have a hot water cycle going on, we don't add new water, at least not too much of it. Let's maybe first set up the desalinators. I should be able to put two of them in here. Let me actually make some more space. I just noticed I can rotate them, that would be a little bit more convenient because that means I can output right here, send all the liquid through the, the salinators. Let's make the output at the bottom so we can output them both at the same place and right here we're gonna just split it off into two pipes. After the liquid has been converted to water, I would like to bring it all the way back into the liquid reservoir. Now this inevitably means the liquid reservoir here is gonna fill up and at a certain level I kind of want to prevent more new liquid being added. Mm, I guess let's get some of that stuff already built so I have a better overview of what's actually going on. Well I guess we still could do this shut off so the incoming water needs to be stopped at a certain point. There it is, already got the liquid reservoir in place and we would set this to something along the lines of 50% maximum. Uh, let's do 75% maximum and about 25% minimum. This means when the reservoir is less than the low threshold aka 25%, it is gonna send a green signal until it reaches 75%. Then it sends a red signal until we reach 25% again. You know what, these numbers fluctuate a little bit too much. Let's go with 70% and 60%. So it's not that much of a cycle pass whenever the reservoir reaches high threshold. That means sending a signal directly from the reservoir to the shutoff should prevent any more liquids from entering when we reach 70%. And honestly, we should probably do the same thing here with the refined brine and salt water. So it's also gonna go through a shutoff and if we already have reached maximum capacity with this reservoir, it's also gonna shut this one up. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and do something like that. Now, what else could go wrong? How are we even going to fill this up? Yeah, say the water is way too hot and everything is going to recycle. This one is inevitably going to fill up. However, I'm just thinking this might also screw with the aqua tuner loop. The loop should always go smoothly. Yeah, before we build everything, we should maybe think about that. It's going down into the aqua tuner room. I already have enough in order to set up at least one aqua tuner. I'm going to do that right here so we can go into a sensor, liquid pipe thermo sensor as usual. Connect that right there. We would then be continuing with the piping and we even have the space to set up another aqua tuner. Now I wonder, I think I should probably do this one block up. So what if we added a layer of mesh tasks here first? I have my first aqua tuner here, this going in and then I can go down and straight out. Oh, actually that's not possible. Also, what about the oil? Shouldn't we have a secondary setup for the oil? I think I'm gonna leave that open for now. Right now, I'm just gonna do the one aqua tuner loop. We might add a secondary aqua tuner for cooling it down more efficiently. Or we might add a second aqua tuner to also cool down the oil. But right now, all we need to do is bring this all the way back. Let's also hop over here and this should go in there. Now, if we have too much liquid, of course, no new liquid is going to come from the desalinator section. But new liquid or the recycled liquid is going to still come from the aqua tuner loop. Now, one thing I don't think I'm getting is how is this going to fill up? In what scenario? And is that also going to slow down my loop? So the only way it's going to fill up is if the water is way too hot and we have to run it multiple cycles. So it's going to go in here and then it's slowly going to fill this up. And that also means the packets cannot go in smoothly into this reservoir. It's always going to be stuck for a single block, which means we have to add at least a buffer. Now, are these other reservoirs even doing anything? You know what? Not really. So we could take advantage of that. That is actually brilliant. We bring it to the next reservoirs and this reservoir can do something that is not very smooth, but it's going to go into the second reservoir and the third one no problem. So let's say instead of building this bridge here, we don't even need that. We can directly connect it over here. So right there. And it's going to join the water line. That now also means if we cannot add the packets quickly enough to the first reservoir because it might be occupied by the other line, uh, we sneakily bring this over and go over the output of the first reservoir, which means the output is going to be occupied and all the packets that go through here are preventing anything from exiting the first reservoir. It's going to fill up the second one. Yeah, I think I might just have to test this out. The question is, do we even want to bring it into the first reservoir? I mean, this is not necessary. Right, we could just go ahead and remove these pipes here and bring it directly over. Maybe this would be a little bit more elegant. Yeah, so far I do like the concept. I'm a little bit scared that I might not even have the space to do another loop for the oil, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, we could always go down here with the oil, for instance, go beneath, do a little aqua tuner loop, have a reservoir. Hmm, It's going to be a little bit complex to achieve everything, but, you know, we got to try. I'm already going to prepare the liquid locks here for my aqua tuner room. And then maybe another liquid lock right here. Uh, come on, right there for the steam turbine room. And if we already think about the cabling, I might run it through here. Yeah, that is actually pretty convenient. So we might just go ahead and bring this over here. Use a chain plate there. Another chain plate. Hmm. Yeah, maybe not even a chain plate. We might make this a ladder shaft and this goes all the way down here. This one needs to be a chain plate and the lower one, of course. Okay, so far so good. We built everything I pre-planned so far. Let's have a look at the piping. I added a bunch of loops, one right here and another one on the top. So instead of going directly into the water source, we could take a little detour and do some radiation stuff just to make sure there are no more germs in there. I'm not so sure about the loop on the top and having two of them is kind of redundant. However, if I already split the water here, I might have to do a little security measurement just to make sure no germs are present. Or we might just go ahead and fill this also up with chlorine. That might help as well. But you know, instead of just losing the building real estate right here, we could go ahead and set up a bunch of mechanized airlocks built out of uranium. And that is going to make sure to kill the rest of the germs. However, I don't want to waste too many of these doors. Let's say maybe four of them are enough. And now we have to do this right with the priority. This would be nine, eight, seven and so on. Okay, so far so good. That actually kind of worked out. 
I'm really surprised. So let's make this detour and that should be the rest of it. If we add another aqua tuner cooling loop, it's going to be for something else. But we definitely have the capacity in the steam room. One thing I'm not happy with yet is the routing of the power cables. I think I might just go ahead and exchange these with a heavy watt wire as well. But then again, having so much heavy watt wire and eventually the conductive wire, kind of a waste just to reach all of these pumps. <sighs> I'm gonna let future Nathan decide on that problem for now. Let's get rid of these notifications. Oh no, I'm making the same mistake again. The steam turbine is touching the heavy watt trim plate. So we'll have to move this over. Uh, um, let me see, we could make this one thicker, no problem. Now we can have the steam turbines like this and the plate isn't touching it. Yeah, this might actually even be better because we can make it even with the other building. Let's do that. With the additional space, I'm going to route the power cable through the center. I think that's going to be much better. Also, what we could do is use the incoming water in order to cool down the steam turbines. Because technically, we only use the aqua tuner if there is some liquid going through. And if there is no liquid going through for extended period of time, we also don't need to cool down the steam turbines. Yeah, first let's do the output here of the steam turbines. They are going through here into a liquid vent, iron ore. And we're gonna set up a bridge right here. This way I can go through this part. And then we're gonna switch to some aluminium pipes. Just three for each steam turbine. And we can then easily connect this back together. So instead of going straight down, it's first doing the loop here. Just one bridge missing and we're done. Okay, not too shabby. Everything has been built. I pumped out the room and now we are bringing some water from downstairs. And I just want to fill up the second tile so the aqua tuners are touching the water. And I decided that I'm going to use the second aqua tuner to hopefully cool down the oil. So imagine we get the oil somewhere from the top. We can lead it through the wall here. And it's then first going to go into a liquid reservoir, for instance, before we cool it down. Now, we might run into some issues when it comes to the liquid yeah i totally messed this up <laughs> the problem is we need the liquid lock on the outside so this would never have worked so if we can somehow push this crude oil spot up and one over that would be perfect come on do it nice okay now we can remove this part again but yeah either way we'll have to pump it out once again i'll be right back we can already do the piping for the aqua tuner it's the same thing just symmetrical then I guess we would need to figure out a way to recycle that back into the liquid reservoir. Yeah, looking at this, I think this is going to be enough water. Let's disconnect the pipe somewhere along these lines. Also on the top here, my intention is to drop a little bit of oil. But if I do that right now, I might be in trouble. Yeah, I think we first have to close off the lower room there. Oh, wait a second. Maybe we don't even have to combine the bypass here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if we bypass the aqua tuner, that means the oil is cold enough and then we just want to lead it outside of the contraption again. So that means we go up here, hop over there, go up there, hop over here, and then we can go all the way back upstairs to wherever the oil spot is. Sure, I think that's gonna add up. Let me actually think. This here is gonna be the oil pipe. So it's this pipe right here that we want to target and we could do that. Let me think. We'll have to rearrange a few things. Hmm. I might first want to remove what we don't need anymore. This oil pipe here, we technically don't need anymore because it would first be going down. So it goes down here, hops over there, goes all the way down into the liquid reservoir. And then it's going to do the cooling and it's going to come back up, join the pipe. Okay, it does look a little bit more complex, but I'm just hopping over in a different way. So now the cooled down oil from the bottom can join the pipe again. And I removed the bridge that was here and placed it here instead, so that I have the possibility to add a bridge right there. It's just, you know, bridges are confusing once they are placed, but really they are pretty straightforward. Nice vacuum achieved again. That was not such a pain in the butt. We can clean this up, then add the reservoir, see how we do the routing. Now, one important thing about this liquid reservoir is we need to build it out of steel and we don't have this in order to fill it up because otherwise it would interact badly with the environment. It's just as a buffer so we can use the aqua tuner to its full extent and will not run into any issues with the liquid reservoir. So let's say I add a bridge right here. That means the new oil coming in would not get the priority. So stuff that's coming out of the aqua tuner goes directly back into the liquid reservoir and then it's coming out. And we are not storing it inside. However, if there is in some way an accumulation, we have it as a little buffer. 
So now we can also route it through the sensor and this should be a completed loop. I'm already going to set the sensor to above 25 degrees and we're going to do that for the water as well. That should be the target temperature. There it is. I believe that should be the last of what I need to build here. And now that the liquid lock is removed, we should be able to add a little bit of crude oil here as well. And I think all we want to do is remove the oil on the heavy water joint plate. Then since this is a vacuum, no heat transfer is going to be possible. Wonderful. So now we only have to do the cleanup work. And hopefully once I place this, it's going to go up and not over. But I have to say, I'm pretty happy how this turned out so far. And the next time once we start pumping and maybe fixing a couple of the contraptions that I noticed went wrong, we can observe the system in action. And no, it actually goes over. I mean, it's not that bad. It's just for OCD reasons, right? Because the oil on the other side doesn't reach. Ah, it's gonna be okay. Let's go ahead and finish this. And there is the finished contraption. Wonderful. All right, I would say with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap it up for today. The next time we can start pumping all of this up, giving us better access to the actual magma biome as well. Great, thank you so much for watching, guys. And also, thank you very much for subscribing in the previous episode. I noticed it. I know I usually never ask for likes and subscriptions, but it really helps. So even if I only mention it seldomly, I always appreciate when you hit that like button or even subscribe. That really motivates. But there we go. Have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Bye bye.